Shut up and sit down. if it's a van life van I don't think this one is there's a dog inside and he's got a roof rack and a beard so and the t-shirt that says go nowhere fast as he's holding up all the traffic I hope he's okay yeah it looks like a van lifer let me see if he's okay I guess he hit or got stuck or something He's getting in the car, so leaving the dog. Are you driving off, leaving the dog in the car? There's someone else in there. <laughs> I'm like, don't leave the dog. Yeah, that's a van lifer. Aw, always sad when they break down. That's a shame. So this is driving in Texas. <laughs> you got the traffic, big rigs. You got people on the shoulder. You got the vehicles here that are get getting off the road because it's Texas and that's where everybody drives. And you got little old me who's just kind of stuck trying to get off at this exit. And you got this van that's just like, or this truck that's just like, I'm gonna do whatever the hell I want. And then there's other car that's like driving right there. I'm just gonna follow these guys. Oh my God. That, uh, we had all the snow and, and the, um, the police were like, the worst thing is uh, Texans driving in the snow. <laughs> That's like the biggest fear. Texans driving, period. I am I am glad I'm not stuck in that traffic. There is something going on down there. That is my exit that way down there. So I'm going to take a detour and hopefully get to my storage unit. I hope that van's okay. It breaks my heart. Oh, that's their home. A little tiny home on wheels. Oh my God. This is Stephen F. Austin State Park. And I thought I'd take a little detour today and just take Prudence out for a bit. It doesn't look like it's too busy. And this will be, I don't know, 56th State Park or something. So anyway, all right, cool. Let me get a picture and then uh, let me go inside. That's actually a really pretty camping spot. Look how pretty that is. It's all grassy and it's got two picnic tables. And this is only maybe just over an hour from my house, just west of Houston. This is really pretty. I love these trees. They're like the, not weeping willows, they just kind of dangle. <laughs> I don't know what they are. I need to like take a class on, on flora and fauna. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, super pretty. So this actually reminds me a little bit of the jungle gardens in Louisiana, right by the Tabasco factory. And, uh, yeah, all these like hanging tree things, little secret places. All right, I think I'm lost already. Uh, I don't think I can go that way. I just want to keep going on the Cottonwood Trail. Okay. Yeah, they said most of the trails were closed because of the water, since there's a big creek nearby and Houston tends to flood. So and I know this firsthand because my whole house washed away <laughs> like six years ago. What the hell? So these are the closed trails, about half the trails in the park are closed because they flooded. Um, it looks pretty. <laughs> this is nice, this is a pleasant surprise, a little hidden gem right near Houston. So I've been hiking about, I don't know, two hours. <laughs> I think I only went like four miles. Um, feels really good, my foot's good. Uh, this is a really easy park, very kid friendly. The trails are probably maybe less than like 10 miles of trails. Um, really interesting terrain. Kind of reminds me, as I said, like the uh, jungle gardens in Louisiana. All right, I'm just hobbling now. I think I need to rest. <laughs> eat something and then drive back to the uh, storage unit, which is only like maybe 20 or 30 minutes away from here. Okay, almost home. 
I think, uh, yeah, the trails are still closed. Some of them were open that they said were closed. So I actually walked further than I had intended, which is not a bad thing, considering that I should have uh, been here last weekend. And I wasn't because I freaking got attacked by a treadmill. Anyway, all right, up the hill and then back to Prudence. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. It is another weekend. So I'm heading out. I just had a doctor's appointment. So I'm heading out now to uh, hike at Houston, I guess. Well, you probably saw something. I, I said I was going to put some other stuff in this video from last weekend. So my foot is fine. I am taking my bike with me. Hopefully I'll be able to ride a little bit. At least I can just ride and find like who has the food because there'll be like 80 of us. Anyway, so I'm just leaving my storage unit and uh, heading out to uh, yeah, go do my thing. So anyway, uh, have a great weekend, everybody. If you're not doing anything exciting, I'm sure it's exciting to you. <laughs> if it's not exciting to anyone else, and if you are not doing anything exciting, or you are, so I'm trying to get out of here. Look at that sunset, that's phenomenal. All right, let me get out of here because all these like people with big old freaking RVs and boats are trying to get into the storage unit right now. All right, talk to you later, bye. morning from a cold Lake Livingston. Um, so a bunch of the women uh, that are in the camping group uh, showed up last night. Most of them got here yesterday afternoon, so they've already kind of met each other and gone camping. I'm an extroverted introvert, so I'm not sure if I'm actually going to go meet anyone. <laughs> so I might just ride by and pick up some hot chocolate or something. But I am going to make a cup of hot chocolate right now. And this is my morning tea setup. So I have my Jackery and I have this 12 volt really cool i think it's one liter or maybe 750 mils uh like hot water pot it takes about 20 minutes to heat it's a little bit slow but the idea is it's supposed to go in the car um 12 volt uh plug so you can like heat your coffee while you drive so i don't drink coffee but i will have some hot chocolate um a little hack if you have extra masks and you don't want your um like your you know, porcelain uh, mugs and stuff from clam clanging together when you're driving, you can just put one of the masks around. So this is what I do with my masks. Obviously, because I live in Texas where we, <laughs> we don't have to wear them anymore. Um, so I just use these to make sure that nothing, none of my uh, mugs are like, you know, hitting each other when I drive. So anyway, so I'm just going to relax. Um, it's probably around 830 right now. It's a little bit late. I slept in. It's cold. It's like 40 degrees, 50 degrees. So I'm going to go hiking. There's probably about maybe eight miles of easy hikes. And then I think maybe later, I didn't bring my paddleboard because it's too cold, but I think later I'll probably just go ride my bike around the campsite, go meet people and be social. So this is my campground at Lake Livingston. Some people were pretty loud last night. It's actually really windy and cold, which is awesome because it means no one's going to be out. <laughs> so it is a little a little close together but it's pretty good this is a great spot I actually got confused because I have so many campgrounds and trips booked for the next like two months that I didn't realize that I have electrical so I didn't pack the food to be able to cook because I thought I would just have you know just the jackery so when I have electrical generally what I'll do is I'll um I'll bring like food that I can cook and I can use my skillet and things so I didn't do that so I've just basically been living on snacks um which is fine uh anyway so I'm gonna go for a hike that's cute little camper over there it's super tiny I don't know how you would sleep in that I guess that's just a, a cargo trailer that's super cute anyway so I'm gonna go um, on a hike and then I think what I'll do is probably veg the rest of the day I think I just need to rest my foot and really do nothing and then I might just get on the bike later if it it's actually getting colder today it's going to be in the 40s it's in the 50s now it's going to be in the 40s later so I love this though it's like having fall in February which is so Texas like our seasons just don't make any sense I mean some guy on a bike right here so okay so I'm gonna go uh go for a hike now
this is Lake Livingston and there's the boat dock over there. And if it wasn't 45 degrees, I would be out there in my paddleboard. I've actually not been on the paddleboard in a lake. I've only been to uh, Town Lake, which is actually like part of the Colorado River in Austin. So I usually would just uh, go down and back up. It's really windy, so it's probably super windy when I'm speaking. <laughs> a lot in the winter time in Texas a lot of the state parks get flooded so they block off although this looks like it's been here a while so, <laughs> I mean when somebody etches in the word stop yeah so this is a loop it just loops around and goes along the uh, lake and then comes back around yeah it looks kind of marshy and swampy over there and then it would just loop back around over here so I'm gonna head back I've done about I've done I've hiked find a thousand words to replace the word done. I've done Europe. No, I did a poo. That's what I did. You traveled to Europe. You experienced Spain. You climbed a mountain. You didn't do a mountain. The only things you do are laundry and, I don't know, go to the bathroom. <laughs> so anyway, find a uh, hundred words for the word uh, do. So I hiked two miles and I'm gonna head back and go on some other trails on the other side away from the lake. And then I think I'm done. I think I'll probably be done in about an hour total. And then find something else to do. The, the nearest bike trail is like 30 minutes away. So I'd have to like drive out of the park. Um, so I think I'm just probably gonna ride the bike around the park and go see if I can meet some people. I don't know. I kind of get shy. Like I can talk all day, all day, every day about travel to complete strangers. But the minute I have to get up and accept an award or <laughs> make a speech, or do a zoom presentation i just literally close up and crawl into a cave so yeah that's the that's being an extrovert extroverted introvert and being a pleasant scorpio yeah so that said let's go back over here to the map yeah this one's also closed off this is where the loop comes around so i am right here and i just hiked from up here all the way down on the purple line which was not far it's only like two miles and then we go back up to the blue trail i'm gonna, I'm gonna hike the yellow trail and then i'm gonna cross back over it's really simple i mean this is a really kid-friendly park see kids <laughs> so um and then i'm gonna i'm going to hike the red loop to the blue loop and then continue the red loop back up to my campground and then i'll be done so i think it's just under six miles maybe less maybe only five miles but it's a good one. I'm still still recovering from the broken ankle. So, all right. And there's a bench if you get tired from doing the minimal amount of hiking. <laughs> so, all right. It's gorgeous. I love like all this like Blair Witch stuff. Yeah, it's like zombie apocalypse training. <laughs> I think that's what we all need now. I think I'm, I'm definitely uh, definitely conditioned to run through a scary forest and ride my bike through a scary forest and find places to hide in a scary forest so the zombies will never find me
I'm just laying here watching uh, YouTube and Netflix and people are packing up. This guy over here, he had a tent on the back of his SUV, which I think is a thing. Like you can buy these tents that you open the tailgate and I think he's leaving. It's getting windy and cold. It's down into like the 40s right now. And these people over here in the RV were up until like midnight, drunk and partying. And so thankfully they're inside and there's no more fire pit. All the wood is soaking wet. I like this. This is my kind of weather. And I think I need to force myself to have like just a lazy day. It's now like two o'clock in the afternoon and that guy's leaving. Yeah, I don't think I'm actually gonna get out of bed. I left my, I'm only an hour from my house but I left my Japanese blanket at home. So I have my Sub-Zero sleeping bag, which is super warm and comfortable. And then my travel map, which I need to put more stickers on and get more little sleepy clouds. It's, it's extremely barren around like the West Coast, obviously, because it's like $7 a gallon for gas, probably something like that in California. Probably won't be going to California. If I do, I'd probably go to Quartzsite and then just pop over and stay somewhere right on the border of Arizona in California, just so that I could say that I did California. So nothing makes me more happy than my own Sonic Bay that I'm not gonna take the roof off with. So very rarely do we find a Sonic where they actually have a bay without an awning. Yep, so yay for van life. Good morning from a very sunny and cold Lake Livingston. So I actually moved last night over to this spot, which is perfect because I'm right on the end. And uh, the people next to me, I went to the store. When I came back, there was like 30 people in the spot next to me that were all like, they had like two fires going. They took my own fire pit. And I was, even though I don't use the fire pit, that's super rude. Like don't take someone's fire pit or move into the little picnic table. I mean, they could ask and I'd say no, but because <laughs> I don't want 20 people right behind me. Anyway, um, these people, not with the, the black truck, but the ones that were, I guess they've left, they were blasting music all night. So a lot of people cleared out. It got down into the 30s and all this was full. So I guess everyone either left late last night um, after like nine o'clock or they uh, left early this morning. I didn't hear anyone. I just slept all through it because I was so warm in my sub-zero blanket. That's a cute little camper over there. I stayed in one of those in uh, um, Santa Fe in an Airbnb. It was a stationary little one, as you can see. That was super cute. I would totally stay there again. Actually, it was right before I started van life. I wanted to go and stay in Airbnbs that were like super tiny little campers and things. And so I stayed at the Hotel Luna Mystica, which you can see here. And then I go back there and I stay um, in the van because they have a shower and it's only like 10 bucks. Well, it's $25, but they charge me 10 for media because I know everybody. And actually I met um, one of the builder, original builders. I met their mom in Austin at the Tiny Fest and that was funny. Anyway, so I'm not gonna stay here. I'm gonna go to Huntsville. Actually, I'm gonna try to go to a um, mountain bike trail, but it is kind of cold. Um, and I'm just, you know, still, my ankle is still a little concerning because it was stinging yesterday around mile seven of my hike. So I don't know, I'll just head out of here and just drive. I'm only like an hour from home, but I'll drive about half an hour to a mountain bike trail, see if it's um, free and open. And there's Ranger. So, okay, come on Prudence, warm up. I gotta unplug her. <laughs> so, I'm gonna take out the lifeline and then resuscitate her and get her on the road. This is the Double Lake Recreation Area. There's a like an eight mile mountain bike trail, but I think it's a USB area. So I don't think it counts with state parks. And I think I have to pay. And they still have Christmas decorations up, that's funny. Um, I don't know if anyone's here. Camping fees, day use is $7. I don't have any cash. I, don't, I never carry cash. All right, so executive decision. <clears throat> I went to the gas station to get a hot chocolate and um, my back of my ankle, I guess my Achilles heel, is uh, a little bit tight, so I'm not gonna mountain bike today. 
but I am going to drive through <laughs> and then drive back out. So I am going to check this out and then I'm going to leave. So technically I'm not actually using the area, I'm just driving in and out. Which, you know, some places that are fee based will actually let you do that if you just want to check it out. See how pretty it is. Um, but there's some up in uh, the Austin area that are like super nasty about it. They're like, no, and I'm like, dude, I'm just going to drive in, take a video for other people and leave. So these are super pretty campsites, um, but they're not level, <laughs> so this is like a severe incline, and look at the, oh my god, there's no way I'd be able to park on that. I do take note when I'm staying at campsites of what would be the best campsite spot to come back to, so I have my little tally of like, go to spot 53 and spot 62, but these are not, like, here's the thing. Even though if you are fully off the grid, like I'm off the grid, except for I don't have permanent solar, but I do have a solar panel. Um, you know, you have to be mindful that even if you park at tent camping, like this side over here, that's somewhat a little bit better level. But down here, like this one's more level, but you've got like a gigantic tree root. Like you can't park on that. Yeah, no, this is... Uh, Oh, this side okay so this is a good one that's level so if I park on this side that's super level over there but the ones that are down by the river have been um, <laughs> you don't do the steps you're gonna live in a van down by the river <laughs> uh, yes and that's the river that I'm staying at which is beautiful oh speed bump yeah, this is definitely government, like private land that was handed to the government because it's kind of crap. Yeah, there's no way I could park in the, uh, the side, the, um, the, was it the riverside? <laughs> this is like severe incline, severe incline. And this one is much better. So I would probably park over here if I stayed. But yeah, very beautiful. This is pretty, very mossy. But yeah, unfortunately, not great for, uh, vans. Great for tents. I've actually met these guys. I think they were in Tiny Living Big Adventure. I don't know what they're doing. They were at um, one of the Tiny Fest things that I was at. That's funny. They're not home. <laughs> There's no car. Yeah. They have a palm tree that lights up. Uh, there's a lot more trails on here than at the other Lake Livingston. I should have come here yesterday <laughs> instead. Uh, this is closed, but all of these, there's an eight mile loop, which I think is what I was going to do on my mountain bike. So I'll check it out. My ankle's still a little iffy. Uh, I might be able to hike or ride my bike. We'll see. But yeah, this is good. I'll just spend a few hours here and then head home. This is Huntsville State Park. Super pretty. There's Prudence even prettier <laughs> prettiest girl in the park you know i'd never see any other converted cargo vans in texas even in austin i only see a few like factory built ones and a few like sprinters but anyway um i guess if you want to go fishing um warnings there's alligators uh invasive species <laughs> boating safety and a very muddy yeah, there's alligators in here, so I don't know if I would take my paddleboard out. Although, I could bring my big gigantic plastic paddleboard that I just got, which I'm not entirely sure how I'm supposed to fit it in that thing, or even hoist it onto the roof, since it's like 10 feet long. But I could bring it to some place like this and just like dump it right here and then go park over there. So I think when I go to Austin, I'll have the... Um, inflatable paddleboard because I have to walk about a quarter mile from the parking to where I put it in the Lake Travis but if I were to come to some place like this there's a boat launch which is significantly easier and I could get one of those little like tricycles that you put on the back of a of a paddleboard like a little um you know like when the dogs don't have back legs and they have to wear one of these like um I don't know what they are contraptions that have the two wheels on it you can get those for your paddle boards anyway yeah, there's like no one here at my ankle. I'm hobbling right now, so I'm not sure if I'm actually going to do anything here. 
I'm kind of worried. I need to be able to run for the next two weeks. So I think I'll drive around. I think I'll just do a very, very short hike. Maybe when I put my hiking boots on, which are, um, well, right now I've got my <laughs> flip flops. When I put my hiking boots on, maybe they'll be a little bit more stable than my flip flops, but yeah. Okay. All right. Just checking it out, you know, doing my travel research, getting my information for the, uh, for the masses. So because I listen to my brain and not my body, <laughs> I decided to go on a bike ride. It's like maybe six miles could be 14 if I hook onto another trail. Yeah, actually I, I rode around the parking lot and my uncle is fine riding a bike. So I think it'll be good to kind of loosen it up a little bit. And I think after I drop the van off at the storage unit, I'm gonna go to Chinatown in Houston and go get my back realigned by the lady that walks on my back. So, okay, so yeah, so there she is. Beautiful day, gorgeous day. And yeah, let's do this. I need a bike ride. I haven't ridden my bike in like almost a month. So this will be fun, hopefully. <laughs> I got water in case I get stranded. That was about seven miles heading back to the van and yeah i think i'll come back here i think this is a good way to break up the drive coming from the north through texas so now i just got to find the car i think i'm about half a mile so just gonna head this way yeah good run excellent good choice jenny so i only fell twice <laughs> Uh, my chain came off three times. Once when a uh, twig got caught in the derailleur. Second time um, when I hit a tree root. And the third time when I spun out on some sand. So I generally fall every time. Oh, I'm getting a little belchy. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so I've actually been riding mountain bikes for 41 years. <laughs> I'm 43 now. So I'm pretty experienced. I used to race uh, competitively BMX bikes as a kid in England. Um, back in the 80s in London, so that was super fun. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, I've had a number of bicycles. I'm actually thinking of getting a BMX for trails like this where it's really rooty. It's, uh, I guess it would be like kind of technical because you have to um, really pay attention and like know how to change gears and lift your bike up over the roots and things. So I pedaled the entire way. I didn't even walk the bike except when I fell off. Um, so yeah, no, it's, uh, it's good. That was a great run. I actually like this park a lot. I can't imagine in the summer though, there's like hundreds of like day areas and all that. I think it would be a madhouse. This is like literally just 30 minutes from the woodlands, which is where Harry and I used to live when we first moved to Houston. Um, but when it's like 40 degrees and a Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, oh, sorry, the big game Sunday, um, it's pretty much empty. So yeah, so anyway, so that's good. Yeah, so I'll put this on my list as one of the good parks to come to. There's another like eight mile one that goes on the service road around the perimeter of the park. So I think if I came back and had more time and wasn't as injured, um, I would uh, do the six, uh, seven miles that I just did. And then I would go and do the, the eight miles on top of that. And that would be, you know, pretty good run. So yeah, so now I'm gonna uh, drop the van off at her home, at her storage unit and then head to uh, Chinatown and get a really good massage. I need my back realigned. And then, um, yeah, so then in two weeks, my next trip is running the half marathon, which you will see before this video, because this video gives away the fact that I broke my foot. <laughs> so, uh, so it's gonna be a little out of order, but who cares? So, all right, well, yeah, Huntsville, uh, uh, Huntsville uh, State Park, definitely a hidden gem.